We're at this remarkable time right now where there's more opportunity to grow spiritually today than ever before. Humanity is evolving, right? There's a collective evolution that's going on right now. We're not doing it alone. The divine is helping. We are at the threshold of a major change in the evolutionary flow of the earth. And that's what's meant by the new Jerusalem. It's already prepared on the other side, but it cannot come here until there's critical mass point where there's enough souls on earth that are living up to their potential so this new day can come. The veil between the physical and spiritual worlds are going to be lessened and this idea of interacting with the spiritual world while in the physical is going to become much more commonplace than it currently is. You earn light with every good word, thought, act, and deed. There's a lot of pleasures in this world, but there's nothing more satisfying than fulfilling what you came here to do and reaching your potential. That's the most satisfying thing of all. Welcome back to the Inspired Evolution. And we have with us, inspiring our evolution from heaven and earth, Dimitri Moraitis. Dimitri, how are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good for having you here. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. We're in the two different poles of the earth, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are tuning in from opposite ends of the world at the moment, yeah. but uniting together um, <laughs> to, yeah, to have this conversation. For those yeah. tuning into Dimitri for the first time, please give me two secs. He is the co-founder and the executive director of the Spiritual Arts Institute. He's an accomplished teacher, spiritual healer. He's the co-author of Karma and Reincarnation. Uh, the Healing Power of Your Aura, and Communing with the Divine, and more recently, um, Heaven and Your Spiritual Evolution. And a lot of the Spiritual Arts Institute's, I uh, would say, recent growth and impact and everything that's been able to achieve has been in large part thanks to Dimitri's incredible efforts and passion in this space. Dimitri, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, it's a pleasure. I appreciate that you have this inspired evolution podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it feels very aligned to um yeah. to yeah. heaven and the and the spiritual revolution. And it's a it's an incredible um book that you've written. I I do want to talk about because you you're putting together a series of seven books as Boy, the parts yeah, of spiritual exactly arts, right. right? Exactly right. Boy, you're right right in cue. So yeah, so let's say when People study the seven liberal arts, right? It's a college mm -hmm. for centuries now. What are you really doing? It's not really a trade. Mm -hmm. It's um, how you train the mind to think so that you're prepared for the intellectual rigors of life. You know, you have to make decisions. You have to evaluate. There's a skill to all of that. And the seven mm -hmm. liberal arts teach that to you. The seven spiritual arts yes. help to prepare you for the spiritual rigors of life, the demands that life makes on your soul, on your evolutionary process, the challenges, the opportunities. So these different arts kind of help to align because really when you think education is about what quality of living, right? The, the more educated you are, it's not just about getting a job. Of course, that's wonderful too. Hmm. It's just you understand life better, right? And you appreciate it more and you get more out of it. So yeah, stop me if I'm wrong, but the first one was on karma. The next one's on healing. Actually, the first one was on the aura. So aura. Uh, here we go. Yeah, run me through if you don't yeah, mind. That, so we say that book tells the world um, what we do. We meditate with divine light in the aura. Hmm. This last book, Heaven and Your Spiritual Evolution, tells the world who we are. We're a spiritual growth organization. So. Through evolution, the soul grows, you know, it develops itself, it becomes more splendid. And we're at this remarkable time right now where there's more opportunity to grow spiritually today than ever before. So if you've had this awakening already yourself, whether it was gradual or dramatic, that's not accidental. That is God knocking on your door. The divine is saying, pay attention. There's opportunity here for you. Why is it that we're at this particular juncture um, where there's so much opportunity for growth? Because when we look out into the world, 
um, it can be perceived as quite a challenging time for the earth. And like when we look out, there is a lot of disaster um, that we can also witness, right. but also, right. you know, there is also opportunity and risk. And so I'm here feeling that you're. Yeah, it's such a great question. There's a lot of what we call doom and gloom scenarios. Mm. You know, the sky is falling, the world is falling apart kind of a thing. But often, and again, the talk about inspiration, the inspiration mm. we get from the higher is the world is not getting worse, it's getting better. And the things you're seeing now are the growing pains. But what happens is our communication is so improved, you know, as you probably have heard, a false lie can travel the internet six times faster than the truth yeah, because it, it gets your attention. It, it viscerally kind of almost attacks you. And then you can think everything is a big problem. Uh, Hans Rosling, that was the, the, he was in global health. He did these amazing, you know, videos that were showing, if you look just at health in the last 150 years, we're much healthier now. The world is in a much better place than it was 150 years ago. Of course, there's a lot more people too, right? Everything's more mm. intense. We're, we're able to, I mean, you can wake up in the morning, get the latest feed on news. That, that It used to be you had to just wait for the paper before you got your news, right? Or So what we're in this information crunch time period now. So what it means is you do have to be more discerning. There's a rule in the aura you know, an energy cannot enter your aura unless you permit it to happen. So if there's something going on that's distressing, oh. you don't have to let it in. You can say no to it, but you have to exercise that. Just like you can lock your front door and no burglar is going to get in. But, you know, if you open the door, people can get in. Right. So you have to you have to be strong. It is a time for strength, but it's also a time for enormous, enormous opportunity because the 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 humanity is evolving right there's a collective evolution that's going on right now which is part of the natural flow of life just like there's a personal evolution mm. and we're at this golden time i mean you look at other things in the sciences and the you know i mean the staggering accomplishments in the last 150 years seem to be like 10 times what it was over the last thousand years right so and it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight, right? Now we're going to head into AI. But that's what is that going to do? You know. Mm. So, but we can look at this as scary, mm -hmm. or we can look at it as opportunity. Uh, I love that the Chinese symbol, you know, the character for crisis and opportunity. It's the same symbol. So the crisis is just an inflection point. It could be an inflection point to disaster. Yes but it could be an inflection point to opportunity. So please don't let the doom and gloomers punch a hole in your balloon. You know, you, you get in mind what you want to accomplish. You don't let anyone get in your way, so to speak. You listen, you don't be, be stubborn, but you stay on track because the opportunities really are there. One of the interesting things in there is you mentioned that heaven is not a place as much as it is a vibration. Have I picked it up correctly from it's, the it's book? Both. It's both. Uh, tell so, me. Yeah, tell me, please. So, um, why now we're getting to the deep end of the swimming pool. Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we all, every, every religion, every culture has this kind of depiction of a greater life on the beyond, you know, that this world is not all that there is and there's something to aspire to. We were almost going to call the book, the first chapter is called, You Don't Go to Heaven, You Grow to Heaven. Mm -hmm. So heaven is part of an evolutionary process. So there is a greater life. But in that greater life, it's not one place. It's, it's many places. Uh, the, the Bible talks about in my father's house are many mansions. Mm -hmm. And these are actual places you can visit but they're also states of consciousness. So let's say you and I right now, we are talking in our aura, this very moment is vibrating at a certain level. Well, if it was my time to cross over today, I'd take the spiritual power I have today, and that would determine where I end up on the other side. It's not punishment or reward, it's like attracting like. So mm. heaven is this glorious realm with light and love and holy power 
But you don't just go there, you have to build the energy here. You know, the great Indian mystic Paramahansa Yogananda used to say, the goal is to see God face to face, but while in a physical body. Now, I didn't mean literally a face staring at you, but he meant you're meant to have this God presence here, because once you build that heavenly vibration here, that will correspond to the greater beyond. And you can, we can do it here. We have a potential. Each of us are climbing the ladder right now. By the way, we're climbing the ladder, whether we're aware of it or not. But again, if you've had the calling, that means you're ready for what we call the accelerated path. You're mm. ready to take quicker steps. But you do have to answer the call. If someone's knocking at your door, you do have to open the door, right? <laughs> Otherwise, mm. they don't come in. So in that case, if the divine is saying, hey, ready to start the journey, now I can tell you in my own case, I originally when, you know, was pursuing many years ago a, a career in film and television, and it was actually going pretty well. And, um, but I was having, funny you use this term inspired, I, I was having these moments where I was just sort of in a different place. It was not like woo woo or out there. It was very clear, very insightful. And I just called them my inspiration moments. Um, and then they got so strong, it led to an actual awakening. I still didn't even know what it was. But then when I realized it was metaphysics, then I couldn't get enough of it. So there was a definite, in my case, a definite calling. Mm -hmm. You know, I call it my Saul in the road to Damascus moment. For others, it's more gradual. Maybe they've had an interest even from childhood. And then it's grown through the years. But at some point, something inside of them says, ah, I'm either not satisfied with this the way it is. There's got to be something more out there or just a yearning. And you want to answer that call. That's, that is your soul talking to you. And if it's the time to do that, you need to pursue it. I will ask about the way we build our wattage <laughs> here on Earth. But, the, but, but let's, let's, let's circle back to that in just a sec. Because it, one of the... The book is so interesting. I highly recommend it. It goes into so many different places as well. One of the things that I'd never come across before was the different, there are seven different dimensions, seven different planes, even to, is it a, I don't want to call it the concept yeah, of heaven, yeah. the, the, it, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how to phrase it properly while being completely respectful, but there are seven different planes. And with that, there's seven different subplanes within. Can you right. start to describe right, that right. before I butcher, <laughs> butcher for the audience, please? You're saying it great. You're saying it great. No. So <laughs> the other side, okay. So earth is kind of a melting pot of, of mm. vibration. So you could have a, an evolved soul, like a Mahatma Gandhi, and he could be physically in the same room with someone like an Adolf Hitler, hmm. completely different vibratory rates, but they could be in the same physical space together. You would not find that so much on the other side. You are going to find yourself in a realm, not with people like you, but with people with like vibratory rates, the wattage that you were talking about. Hmm. So that means there are different gradations. So there are these the the what you mentioned about the seven planes those are what we call the seven astral planes and those are the literal hereafter when oh, we do astral. cross on from here we're going to go into the astral worlds you know and there are these seven levels seven subplanes so there's literally 49 gradations of astral matter that we're going through some of those dimensions are so earth like when people cross over there, they don't think they die. They don't think they cross over. And they're like, I'm mm. looking at you. You're looking at me. I'm not dead. And then when they realize they're not where they think they are, they almost go into shock at first, right? Because they, they realize they're not in their earth body anymore. Now, other realms, the higher, what we call the higher astral, they take on more of the heavenly hue. They become more splendid. You start to be able to do things there. The laws of physics start to become more miraculous in those higher realms. And you're interacting with, you know, grand celestial beings at that point. And yes, they are starting to help prepare you for the journey to heaven and the, the things that will happen to lead you to that. Now, it's interesting when we do talk about heaven, some people say, well, wait a minute. Uh, well, two things are real interesting. One is, is it over? You know, are you on the clouds playing harps all day long? I mean, is that what heaven's all about, right? First of all, I, I love the, the mystic Helena Blavatsky said when they asked her that question, no, it's not over. You grow from perfection to perfection. Mm. So you climb Mount Everest, 
highest peak on earth and you're so happy you did it and then you look behind you and you see oh my god there's another mountain twice as tall as mount everest right <laughs> so that makes it fun right but the other thing is you're so creative in these higher planes you're so mm -hmm. literally inspired so take for just to get an idea of this imagine yourself your most inspired day that you've had multiply it by a hundred and that gives you an idea what heaven is really like because and you're because it's not just you right it's the environment it's everybody around you the whole world you're in is in this glorious developed enlightened state so you're going to be more creative more productive you're going to express more powers than you ever imagined that you had so this is why it's something to aspire to you know you're trying to build that power and you can start here. I know it feels like, well, is Earth really the best training center for all this? It really is because the struggles we go through, the very resistance that we have to face here is the very measure of our spiritual progress. Think about it. If I want to strengthen my muscles, what do I got to do? I got to lift weights. But what am I really doing when I'm lifting weights? I'm putting stress on these muscles. I'm literally kind of ripping them a little bit. As mm -hmm. they heal, they become bigger and stronger. So it's the resistance that's making me stronger. If I'm only going to lift 10 pounds, I'm not going to get strong if I lift it up a thousand times. So we have to look at some of the challenges in our life, again, as opportunities. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not what's happening to me that's the measure of my spiritual maturity here. It's how I'm handling it. Okay, this, was a, this person disappointed me. Am I going to get mad and angry at them? Or what am I going to do about it? Or I have a lot of work to deal with here how am we going to manage all you know we have to look at everything going on in our life as a spiritual opportunity and i know that's probably the first place to start how we're looking um at developing the wattage but again sorry <laughs> i'm just going to tuck back into that that does develop the wattage because one of the one of the rules is mm. you earn light with every good word thought act and deed every mm -hmm. positive thing constructive thing you are doing builds up this beautiful energy in the aura and mm -hmm. it's actually literally building up even if you're not getting credit for it oh mm -hmm. no one recognized all that work i did and i didn't get any thank you for it yes you did it's in your aura the divine is seeing it so keep doing it because it's building up your energy flow and then the other way is meditation and application. You can actually start to call on these energies. For example, let's say you do need to ask for a raise at your job. You've earned it, but every time you, you want to go into the boss's office, you, you chicken out, right? You just don't do it. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow, you know. <laughs> but that means now in the aura, you might not have enough what we call gold light. That's the confidence energy, right? Mm. So what you can do is meditate, bring in more of that gold into your aura. Now, it won't automatically make you, you know, super dynamic, but it'll start that motion going. And then as you do literally walk into that boss's office and ask for the raise, you're going to have more confidence to do that because the power to make it happen is already in your auric field. And then as you actually do it, then that energy can start to become part of your aura. So we say meditating with divine light doesn't bypass the normal evolutionary process but it does help to accelerate it it's interesting because it seems that growth transcends or is part of the fabric of every dimension we come across um you mentioned earlier we're growing in heaven we're growing in the astral planes yeah. we're growing yeah. here on earth um even just that i don't think we clearly articulated for the viewer that actually heaven is separate to the astral planes even and then there's yeah. earth down yeah. here which when i came across that in your book was completely like yeah completely blew my mind um and the journey through is it is it a journey from earth through the astral planes to heaven is that is it a linear yes, journey? Right. You're, you're doing it on the other side, but you're also doing it here because yeah. you know the old expression, you want to leave the earth better than the way you found it. We all want mm. to do that, right? We all want to leave our footprint on this earth when it's time to go home. But we also want to leave this earth at a higher level of consciousness than when we started. 
So let's say I came in at this spiritual plane. Well, mm. maybe this is my potential. So I can leave on a higher plane mm -hmm. than the one I started on. And that's what we call the spiritual potential. So every soul on earth has a potential. Mm. And through the things you're doing, you want to you want to reach that potential. And, and the other thing we say is there's nothing, look, there's a lot of pleasures in this world, but there's nothing more satisfying than fulfilling what you came here to do and reaching your potential. That's the most satisfying thing of all. Even if you don't taste every wine on the planet or go to every country on the planet. <laughs> the, um, there's a, the concept of the new earth and new Jerusalem, now that you mentioned the word, um, potential because i picked up that you said that if we were all living our highest potential then the new earth would be here tomorrow yeah yeah can you explain that a little bit oh you it's a very interesting topic so um there is this idea of the individual uh evolution that each of us are going and that is regardless of the condition of the world as long as you are living up to your potential mm. uh you can you can hit the mark but humanity as a whole is evolving. There, you know, look, it's the generations before us that created the world we're living in now, right? So whether it's a great world or not a great world, we can thank the generations before us for laying whatever foundation they laid. So the idea is that civilization itself is improving, going mm. through again many growing pains. But the, the, so we're not doing it alone. The divine is helping. So, you know, we've heard this idea of the, you know, the new day, the, the new, there's, there, there, we are at the threshold of a major change in the evolutionary flow of the earth. And that's what's meant by the new Jerusalem. It's already prepared on the other side, but it cannot come here until there's sort of a critical mass point where there's enough souls on earth that are living up to their potential, shall we say, so this new day can come. Now, it doesn't mean everything's going to be automatically lilacs and roses, but it does mean the veil between the physical and spiritual worlds are going to be lessened. And this idea of interacting with the spiritual world while in the physical is going to become much more commonplace than it currently is. Right. So let's go from there. So we've got our, what you describe in the book as a higher self and mm -hmm. we've got ourself and we've talked about the potential and the, and now we've, we're, we're clearly there. How do we move towards the higher self? How do we actually develop um, spiritually? You've got a four part yeah. process in the book. Yeah. Um, well, First, we kind of ask, have to ask, who are we? Mm. Who am I? <laughs> you know, that's the, been the question of the ages. Yeah. Um, metaphysics would say, first of all, you're not your body. Yeah. You inhabit your body. We have a body. We got it when we were born. We will leave it when we die. Mm. Unless we're having an out-of-body experience, we kind of stay in it while we're here. But then... If we're not our body, what actually are we? So again, metaphysics would say every single one of us is a soul. The soul is who we are. It's not that we have a soul. We are a soul and having a, a body. You know, Teilhard de Chardin said, we are not you know, human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Mm. It's the other way around. Now, this soul is an immortal spark of life. It's, it's the animating force of everything going on here. It is, in a sense, without beginning or end. And what's happening is it's going through a process of evolution. It came here to this earth literally like going to school. And this, this incarnation on earth is little like, literally like a grade in school. Well, when you're in school, you don't know everything, right? That's why you're there. If we knew everything, if we were all so smart already, we wouldn't need to be here. What are right? we learning? So we're going to yeah. make mistakes, right? We're going to goof it up. And sometimes we're going to goof it up big time. But it's all part of the learning. But that means there needs to be a part of us that is not immersed in this material experience. It stays in the spiritual realm, 
so it can guide the soul. And that's what the higher self is doing. The higher self is staying in the spiritual dimensions, but it's help. It's receiving inspiration from the divine. And it's literally trying to guide. It's like our guiding light, like that old soap opera, the guiding light. It's like our guiding light. It's trying to guide us, but it's our free will, whether we're going to follow the higher self or not. We don't have to listen to it. And unfortunately, too many times we get caught up in things going on here and we don't listen to it. And then we wonder why do we suffer? You know, because you're not paying attention. You know? mm. So the more you can start to listen to the higher self, you're still making your own decision. It's not making the decision for you. But you start to say, you know, it's good to say rather than, oh, what do I feel like doing today? It's actually better to say, what's the best thing for me to do today? What will help move things best for myself and everybody around me? And take that perspective and that will be more in touch with that higher nature. And the more you do listen to it, the better you get at staying connected. And then, you know, I'm sure we've all had those experiences out of the blue. Oh, I know exactly what to do. Where did that come from? Well, it came from your higher nature and you were hearing. Strange question. Is our, <laughs> intu is our intuition our higher uh, self talking? Ah, uh, that's very interesting now. Boy, you're getting to all these deep topics now. Um, so... Uh, let's start by this. And again, I'm giving the metaphysical mm -hmm. definition. Meta uh, intuition is not instinct. Yes. Intuition is not your emotions talking. It's certainly not your intellect talking. What happens is we have, we have an aura, which is the spiritual energy flow with us. But we also have a type of spiritual anatomy that's interpenetrating the physical. So let's say right now, if, you know, we were in the room together and I saw this blue light around you, but I'm looking at you, but I'm also seeing the blue light around you. Well, how am I doing that? I'm not seeing you know, the blue light with my physical eyes, although I'm seeing you with my physical eyes. I'm seeing the blue light with my, shall we say, spirit eyes. So we all have this sort of spiritual sensory mechanism. Some call it the sixth sense. There are different words for it, right? But the point is, even if we're not consciously connected to it, that's still operating. So intuition is when we're picking up signals from those spiritual mechanisms, and they're prompting us in a certain way. And we're supposed to pay attention to them. So for example, let's say you walk into this room, and it's kind of a plain room, it's nothing special about it. But let's say there was this beautiful golden light of energy in that room. You can't see it clairvoyantly, but it's there. Your spirit senses are picking it up. And you're going to walk in, you're going to kind of have almost this euphoric feeling. It's irrational. It appears irrational. Why? That's sort of a normal room. Why do I feel so good being here? You know, but you want to pay attention to that because that's that spirit part of you talking. Now, in the same way, you could walk into a palace, right? I mean, beautifully appointed, everything there. But there could be this dark, menacing energy in that palace. And you walk in and you get chills. And you're saying, that, that makes no sense. I'm in a palace. Why should I feel this uneasiness walking in here? Well, the intellect may poo-poo it and say, disregard it. Or you could say, you know, something's not right here. And I, you know, I don't think I'm going to stay. So as you listen to those inner promptings, you get more in touch with the spiritual dimensions because you're literally tuning into them. And that can eventually lead to more direct experiences of clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, you know, the, the spiritual sensing that eventually we can all awaken. Mm. And building, <clears throat> you mentioned before, um, I'm almost seeing like positive karma XP being developed every time we do good. Um, and then also yes. you mentioned meditation as well um, yes. as key places to start. Um, where's the space for, is it space for healing? What, like, what, role, does, what role does healing play in oh, us and huge. our wattage? Yeah. Huge. Look, we, healing means change. It means transformation, changing from one condition to another. Now, obviously, with physical you know, illness or physical distress, health and well-being, but it could be poverty to wealth, 
sorrow to joy. You know, we, we, there's always, we're going to all need healing in this world. So it's one of the most important skills to learn, not just in terms of physiology and things like that, but the spiritual principles of healing. Because there's when you notice a blemish in yourself or a quality or something distressing you, or if you do get physically ill, whatever's going on, you can call on the spiritual principles to help change that around. And those results can be absolutely phenomenal when you really start employing those powers. There are healing energies you can call on, but it also, again, it starts in the mind. The more I picture illness, the more ill I can become. <laughs> the more I start picturing health, the more I will not only manifest health, but do things that will help produce health. You know, so I'll take a much more proactive. If, if when you're not feeling well, you take kind of the sorrowful Jones or the self-pity, oh, woe is me, that's not the best approach to take. Yes, you have a physical issue, but you want to do things. What, you want to be more proactive and keep that mind focused on more healing things. Yeah, got it. Okay, so the the journey is ultimately to try and build as much spiritual goodness on our time here at Earth, yeah. or, or while we're at Earth, Absolutely. so that. When we land to the other side, we potentially land because we the the energy we create like attracts like you said when we cross over potentially we that will determine where we land and then our journey and trajectory will continue to grow on the exactly. other side. Exactly. We come back to us, or how does that part of it, yeah? You want the whole thing? That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're opening up one of the whole seven arts, the idea of reincarnation and karma. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the idea of reincarnation? The idea is you can't get it all done in a single life. I don't care if you live the life of Mother Teresa. Mm -hmm. You can't accomplish everything there is to learn on this earth in one lifetime. That would like be saying you are so good in first grade, you got A++. Now you're ready for your graduate Harvard, you know, your, your, your graduate degree at Harvard. There's all those levels in between, right? So we want to think of reincarnation as another opportunity, another opportunity to develop different facets of our nature, spiritually mature. So the re-embodiment process is the time we need to grow the soul. Uh, Henry Ford, you know, the inventor of the car, He's, when he said when he adopted the theory of reincarnation in the interview he was giving, he said, when you write this, write it to put people's minds at ease. Because when I realized this, I realized there was time. I don't have to try to all get it done in a single lifetime. I have to do what I need to do in this life. But I have time. Andre Segovia, the great guitarist, said, how did you learn to be so good? He said, oh, from before I was born, you know. So there, there's, a, there's a process that we have to go through. What we want to do is make best use of the time we have, because the other drama here, and there is drama, right, um, is our evolution through all the lifetimes to get to grow to heaven, unfortunately, is not a straight line upward. Hmm. We would like to think that every lifetime after is better than the one before, and many times that is true, but we're human. And we're going to muff it up. And sometimes we're going to muff it up big time. And when we do that, we're going to go down a little bit. And then up again and down. I like to say the actual journey looks a little bit more like a stock market graph up and down. But overall, it is moving upward. Yeah. When we reincarnate, the Hindus have this perspective that we start off as a... Um as a more simple organism and then we evolve into more com more complex organisms and we end up, well, not right. end up, but we at some point end up with this human experience. Um, which do is we, not the end, by the way. Yeah, which is why I, <laughs> I call myself <laughs> saying end up. Um, and I think that's what we've been exploring in today's right. conversation. Um, <laughs> the Do you go backwards in forms in reincarnation? Do you? Well, okay, this is a great question. And, you know, sometimes traditions have existed for a long time and they're traditions, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
so the the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah, you know, teaches a stone becomes a plant, a plant an animal, an animal a man, a man a mm. god. So there, in, in our terminology, we say there are kingdoms. So there's evolutionary cycles that everything goes through. Mm. So, for example, we know we share a lot of biology with the animals. But from a spiritual point of view, if you saw the aura of a human and the aura of an animal, you wouldn't even say they're remotely in the same kingdom. So from an evolutionary point of view, animals are in a different kingdom than human. Human is its own kingdom. Now, what happens is we, who knows how many eons ago, we were it probably in the animal kingdom. We went through that animal evolution. We completed it completely. Then we started another evolutionary cycle in the human kingdom, which is what we're all in now. If we're making mistakes and big ones in this one, yes, we can do what they say devolve, but we devolve as a human. We don't revert back to an animal because the mistake we made was as a human. Remember, karma has to be paid back in the way it was created. You know, for example, if I misuse money, I have to pay back money karma, but that's different from, let's say, relationship karma. So people say, oh, I'm such a good person. Why am I having so many money problems? Well, your lesson isn't about people and relationships. It's about money and that meant, you know, you, you have to do it in the area that it was needed. Mm. Were angels once humans or are they completely different energetic signature altogether? Well, they're okay. So when we finish and when, when we complete our entire human pilgrimage, which is a long ways we have to go through all the heaven worlds, all the way up to the divine source as a human, mm. which shows you how much potential we still have as a human. Mm. <laughs> but when we're completely done with all of that, and it's time to start another cycle, yes, we'll start in the angelic kingdom as one of the little delightful cherubs. Mm. But that means the angels that are helping us now are elder brothers in light and sisters not in any cycle that we're directly part of now, but who knows how many eons ago, yes, they went through a human experience. They grew to the angelic state. They didn't just become angels. <clears throat> Connecting to these angels necessary as part of, well, necessary, useful as part of our own evolution. And I guess the, question that emerges is how do we best is it an invocation is it a connection is it start with believing in them um yeah what's well, the best way well, to we, connect to angels are not like these out there things angels are as much a part of na <clears throat> nature as we are yeah they're just in the invisible realm rather than the visible mm -hmm. the Talmud says for every blade of grass there's an angel bending over saying grow you know <laughs> So the higher kingdoms help the lower kingdoms evolve. There's what they call at the chain of life. Mm. And we're all connected, which means, by the way, we have a responsibility in the humans to help the kingdoms below us, like the plants and the animals. We can't misuse them. Now, it doesn't mean we don't work with them. And yes, there can be things related to food and things like that. But all this abuse you see it going on is mm. completely against divine law. Those animals, let's say you have a pet, it's not just hugs and kisses and all the fun of a pet. That animal, there's a soul in that animal, and it's looking to evolve, and it's looking to you to help it do it. So there's a transference of energy. You are literally helping your pet evolve mm. its soul. Right. <clears throat> Dimitri, there are pitfalls on the path as well. And you've de dedicated a chapter to that in heavens yeah. Um, yeah. and spiritual evolution. Um, I'm almost tempted Pretty to get you to story. share yeah. Barbara's, <laughs> Barbara's story if, you, yeah. uh, if you'd yeah. be so up for it. But um, yeah, there's some really interesting. Well, yeah. Like anything, they're, they're con people in the spiritual arena. Not everything labeled spiritual is in fact spiritual, right? In any walk of life, they're con people in every, field of endeavor. Spiritual is no, no exception to the rule. Now, mm -hmm. I have to pause just for a moment to talk about Barbara. So I didn't start the Institute by myself by any long shot. 
um, or write the books. Uh, I work with Barbara Martin. She's the co-founder and she's actually has been my teacher for mm. almost 40 years now. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm kind of becoming a little bit her, shall we say, successor. But she was seeing auras from age three. I and mean, there's a fabulous story about her upbringing. And you can see some of it in the in, uh, on the website. And certainly it's in the books. But as an adult, you know, she was very cognizant of the clairvoyant things going on. And she mm. could see the, the really beautiful light stuff, but also the dark stuff. And um, one of the dark stories, I'll keep it short. Um, there's a, I don't know how popular it is today, but there's a, a technique called trance channeling where the trance channeler literally goes into a trance. It's kind of like a, a waking sleep. And supposedly a high spirit from the other side comes in and starts talking through the channel. And this is the idea that you could talk to a spirit from the other side. In the 1800s, the spiritualists tried to do this all the time to prove that there really was a spirit world. And it can be, you know, engaging. It can be entertaining, especially if the spirit seems to know something about you. Oh, I know what you had for breakfast today. I know that you're what, you know, then you sort of go, oh, <laughs> something's going on here. So in this case that Barbara was sharing, she was cautioning people against the psychic because the psychic is different from the mystical. But this friends of hers was very enamored by this trans channel. They went to this event where it was filled with people and this man was his trans channel. And Barbara always liked to say, I like to sit in the back of the room just in case I have to make a quick exit. And this guy went into trance and supposedly this 20,000 year old sage came through and he was talking to the audience and, you know, the mannerisms change, his vocal inflections change. And he seemed to know things about what was going on in the audience and they were transfixed. Mm. And Barbara, with her clairvoyant talents, wanted to see, they call it the control, who the control was, who is that spirit coming through her? He was saying, I'm this enlightened sage, but she wanted to see who it really was. So she shined this ener spiritual energy on there. And after a while, she started to see not this beautiful enlightened spirit, but this lowly impersonating spirit, this low, not, not a high, a low one. And after a while, he became aware that she was not only seeing him, but shining this light on him. Now, the audience had absolutely no idea what was going on. But here, in full trance, this guy gets up, walks down the aisle to the back of the room where Barbara is. Again, no one has any idea what's going on here. And he leans over to her, and it's the spirit talking through him, saying to Barbara, withdraw your light. What do you expect coming from a drunkard like this? Now, the, the friend heard that. And, of course, Barbara and her left, right? But it was always a lesson to her, be careful. Mm. Things are not always what they appear, which is why when you're pursuing anything metaphysical or spiritual, check your own motives. Why are you doing this? Are you doing it because you want to feel important or your friends are doing it? You know, make sure your motives are, are sincere and genuine. Because the beautiful expression, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And just be aware that some people, you know, now it's a, it's a commercial thing now. I hate to say it. You know, there's money to be made here now. And where there's money, there's people want to take advantage of it. And sometimes it's sincere. They think they're doing good. Other times it's a little more malicious. Um, but either way, it, we, you called it the pitfalls because that's exactly what it is. It's a test for us. Are my, are my motives sincere? Am I trying to help others? Am I trying to evolve my soul? Am I willing to look up my strengths and my weaknesses? If those are the reasons you're doing it, you're going to attract the right people to you. If it's to feel more important or to prove something, then you can be sometimes a little bit susceptible to the, to the con, let's say. I don't want to focus on this too much, but the the origins of some of these the dark side. Lowly, yeah, but you meant you 
the book is the book's so dense. <laughs> it's just there's so much in there, and it's it's there's a lot of interesting stuff. I highly recommend it. Um, I will put a link um to the heavens and the spiritual evolution um in the in the show notes below for sure. Um, for those that want to check it out, but you do mention, and we don't we won't focus on this too much, but you do mention the netherworld as well. Just as there's heavens, um, there are other dimensions as well, which are which are darker in their nature. Well, so there's no such thing as eternal hell. Mm. There's no such thing as a mistake so great it's past redemption. Now, it could take a long time to redeem, depending what's happened. But because you're that spark of life, even if you live the most heinous life, eventually you'll be able to redeem it. This is why we say, be careful about trying to take things in your own hands. Even in what appears an unjust world, in the end, justice will prevail. So you do the right thing, live by the highest standards you know, and let God take care of the rest. Now, what happens though is let's say somebody loses so much light, they do so many terrible things that they can't go through the normal process on the other side because they don't have the power. Again, you're saying it's where, where, where's the fuel? So they find themselves in these lower regions, the netherworlds. It's kind of like a holding pen. There, there are areas where they try to wake souls up so they can start on the journey. But the problem is they've been so inundated with whatever they've done. Sometimes they, they're, they're not really, it's almost like they're in a daze and it can take time for them to wake up. So those, those netherworlds unfortunately do exist, but even again, they're not eternal hells. They're, even there, the divine goes into those realms to try to wake them up some wake up sooner than others so they can start back on the path again it's a massive takeaway that i've got from today's conversation is really the the whole fact of the matter is that growth is really the underlying current to the existence yeah. across all dimensions and it seems almost like creativity um is the fruit would you say yeah because the more that we are, all, life is inherently creative. We all want to inherently express ourselves. It's inborn as part of what life is. And exactly right. The more power you have, the more expressive, the more creative you become. Mm. And, and that's what we all want to accomplish. So, you know, the difference between the amoeba and the archangel, they both have that same spark of life, but the archangel has a far more developed consciousness, far more developed form can creatively do far more but the life in in each is essentially the same which is why they say god is not a respecter of persons that we're all you know this is one of the things really to leave today is we're all not only important in the divine fabric of life we're essential the higher is shared if one soul were missing creation would not be complete What is the mission of Barbara and Dimitri together putting together the Spiritual Arts Institute? Um, you guys are the doing some really incredible work so there. Yeah. 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 No, it, it's uh, Barbara's mission has been to help. She was so famous for a while with the aura, mm -hmm. and you know people wanted her to read the aura and all of that, which is fun, but that's not really her real talent. Her real talent was helping souls evolve. What I'm very excited about this time right now is for a long period when Barbara was really coming into her own career, it was sort of the height of the new age movement and everybody was kind of caught on the circus floor and all the phenomenal stuff going on. It seems now that we're maturing a little bit. And mm -hmm. even to have this, what we're talking now, evolution, it would have been much harder to talk on this subject, let's say 20 years ago. But now here is a podcast that you've been hosting on this. So it means you know, we're progressing now. Yoga is more popular, right? It's even in schools. Meditation, my God, they got meditation apps now. That was unheard of not that yeah. long ago. So things have, they are, this is what I mean, things are improving. <laughs> we mm -hmm. have to acknowledge the good that is happening now. But it's also because, especially the souls coming in now, I really think they're more empowered than ever before. Mm -hmm. They are dealing with a more dynamic world. So they have to have the energy to be able to deal with it. But I think also, again, it's our generation, the one after us, the one after that, and that, that that's what's helping to build 
this new Jerusalem that we're talking about. Is it just a matter of time, in your humble opinion, that the new earth will be here? Um, or oh, yeah. is it? Oh, I, I, it, will. it will happen, yeah. And it's the same individually. It's not a matter if you're going to reach the spiritual heights. It's a matter of when. Because right. it's, it's inherent in the soul. Just the only thing is, don't drag your feet. You know, if you've got an opportunity, go for it, all right? The one thing that Hira shared about, you know, karma. Look, we know you're going to make mistakes. That's okay. Don't worry about that. But we see you making the same mistake 20, 30 times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, try to, okay, I goofed this time. How can I do better? Don't, don't justify your actions. Don't rationalize it. Just take ownership of it and correct it. Mm -hmm. There's two more books on their way after this because this is book five in yeah. a series of seven. Boy, you've um, done your homework. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> what are those two books? And, uh, yeah, what's the best way that people can access this book? Well, it's available everywhere, you know, online, Amazon, in, in bookstores. You can go to our website at spiritualarts.org. Um, the, the ones coming up, we're going to do a book on consciousness in the mind. Mm -hmm. And then another one very much on the heart center the spiritual keys of living about, you know, truth is not truth until it's alive in your heart. You know, you can have these wonderful thoughts, but until you're actually living them in this heart chakra area, the soul is not really growing yet, you know, so that's going to be a very, those, those will round out the whole seven arts, those two books. Yeah. Amazing. Dimitri, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing yourself yeah. so abundantly yeah. with us here today. I, yeah, it's um, it's incredible just feeling into the work you and Barbara are putting into the Spiritual Arts Institute and just how abundantly those resources are available online as well. Um, Isn't I think it it's amazing been... that we can do these classes online now? Yeah, yeah. By the way, we were doing it long before uh, um, Zoom era. You know, we were doing it <laughs> back in two thousand six. But if you're in the United States, come on, visit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just, yeah, really grateful for you guys continuing to share and just champion spiritual evolution in such a such a great way. Thank you so much for, for the work you do oh, in the world and your connection to Barbara and all the work she does in the world and also you sharing yourself, obviously, so abundantly here with us today as well. Thank you so much you. on behalf of myself and the tribe. And thank you for the good work you're doing too. Yeah. Hey there, Inspired Evolutionary. If you absolutely loved this, well, then here's a full conversation with this guest on the Inspired Evolution podcast. Check it out now.